गली गुलिया ओपन विद सीसी टीवी फुटेज ऑफ अ बिजी स्ट्रीट फिल्ड विद द एकोज ऑफ द बसलिंग क्राउड द मेकर स्पेंड वेरी लेस टाइम मेकिंग द ऑडियंस रियलाइज दैट सम वन इज वॉचिंग ओवर द स्ट्रीट सम वन हैज द कंट्रोल टू कीप अ क्लोज आई ऑन वॉट एवर इज हैपनिंग आउट साइड सम वन इज इन डीड ईव ड्रॉपिंग and that someone is the character played by Manoj Bajpayee. We cut to the opening credits that reveal the winding lanes of the capital city, an area that is surrounded by brick walls and dark alleys which have become a place of residence for thousands of people, including this man. His dilapidated state of living feels similar to the dark shadows that engulf the aura of the concrete forest. His name is Khuddus and he doesn't look like a family man, but Khuddus does have a friend who uh, takes care of him, just like how Khuddus keeps an eye on what's happening in his neighborhood, Ganesh keeps an eye on his friend to ensure that he is happy and healthy. He becomes a source of not just emotional but financial support as well for Khuddus. In this scene Ganesh informs Khuddus about his brother Shaukat who is wanting to meet him. There is a direct attack with exposition to reveal that Khuddus and Shaukat haven't met for the last 23 years. Ganesh advises Khuddus to take care of himself, go out in the open and get some sunlight. Otherwise, he will end up rotting in this house. This is the first time that the expression of going outside in the real world is mentioned in the film. We need to remember it because it will play a key role in defining the allegory behind Gali Gulia. We then cut to a scene of a butcher's shop. No pun intended, but we are introduced to the character of a butcher played by Neeraj Kabi who is making his son Idu learn the tricks of the trade. You know what I mean. We see him helping his father with the business, but we quickly realize his disinterest in the job. Once again we cut back to Khuddus who is heading out to his place of work. He has an electronic repair shop that explains his fascination with security cameras, but it's not just him who likes to eavesdrop. Idu along with his friends Gini also like to take a sneak peek into the lives of other people living in the same neighborhood. Once again we cut back to the live camera feed that shows a visitor at Khuddus's electronic shop. He is Shaukat, the younger brother who finally decided to visit his elder brother. As he starts mentioning the purpose of his visit, the audience begins to understand the dynamics of their relationship. Their brotherly bond has weakened to such an extent that Shaukat and Khuddus have become emotionally separated. And yes, they also have a big gap between them in terms of wealth. After Khuddus bids farewell to Shaukat, we cut back to Idu who comes back home after finishing the deliveries. We meet Idu's pregnant mother who takes care of the house and her two kids while her third child's birth is due. This is the first time when we see a smile on Idu's face. This clearly establishes how close he is to his mother, but not so much to his father. For the first 16 minutes 45 seconds, the film establishes these two characters by running their storylines in parallel to each other. We again cut back to Khuddus who opens a locked room of his house to look for his mother's necklace that Shaukat wanted as a gift for his daughter's wedding. While Khuddus searches for that necklace, we again cut back to Idu and his mother who seems a little scared. The reason is that they are waiting for the man of the house to finish eating his supper first. As someone who knows her husband very well, Idu's mother tries to save her son from getting beaten. But we soon realize that Idu's father is a butcher, not just outside the house but also inside the house. And this is when the makers of the film utilize show don't tell to reveal that Idu and Khuddus are next door neighbors. Also the chiaroscuro lighting establishes how both these characters are living under the shadows. Khuddus listens to Idu's mother crying for mercy. He decides to help by quickly checking the cameras, but none of them could get a sight of what was happening in that house. The next morning Khuddus decides to look for the house and maybe find the kid who became a victim of his father's anger last night. But surprisingly he cannot find both of them despite Idu sitting by the window right outside his house. Later he shares his concern for the boy to Ganesh who warns his friend to stop doing such things but the way Khuddus expresses his determination to rescue the boy speaks a lot about how we don't really care to help anyone in our neighborhood and ignore someone who might need our help once again we cut back to Idu who asks his mother about how babies come to life and is it necessary to have a baby after marriage these questions reflect the mindset of Idu towards his father maybe he is asking these questions because he thinks that his parents gave birth to him out of hatred instead of love maybe they were not happy with him and decided to bear two more children now let us jump straight to the end of the film where the audience is greeted with a major revelation 
the Shyamalan twist of the story. Using show don't tell, the makers of the film hint towards the fact that Idu is none other than the younger version of Khudus. And whatever we witness till now is actually a depiction of Idu's childhood, who has now changed his name to Khudus as pointed by Shokat in the beginning of the film. In the scene when Khuddus is removing the layer of dust from the photo, we start seeing the faces of Idu's family one by one. In the end, when Khuddus looks at Idu's face, there is a small rack focus shifting from the picture of Idu to the face of Khuddus. But is that the only way through which the makers revealed the truth? Let's get back and draw our attention only towards Idu. We will keep cutting back to Khuddus and study the continuous use of show don't tell because trust me, it is totally worth your applause. Idu goes to the mosque to pray with his dad. Khuddus is already sitting there when he spots a playful shadow. We think that finally Idu and Khuddus are going to meet for the first time. But that does not happen as we only see Khuddus coming out of the mosque. We once again see Idu helping his father at the butcher shop. After explaining how much the family loves Idu, he leaves the shop to finish a delivery. As soon as his father leaves, Idu steals a hundred bucks from the earnings and takes his friend along to watch a film. Khuddus thinks that his camera might have captured a glimpse of that boy. But once again, his effort goes in vain. Notice how he seems to be afraid of the traffic and the crowds outside the colony. He was hesitant to leave the colony and meet Shokat in a previous scene as well. Anyways, after watching the film, Idu finishes the remaining work at the shop. We cut back to Khuddus who is finishing his own work. Now, Idu and Khuddus are crossing the same bunch of workers on the right side of the road. And if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of the framing for both the characters, you will see the mirror image establishing a possible connection between them. In the next scene, Idu comes back home and hides the stolen money inside a box. I'm not sure if it's a toy, let's just say it's a box, but as soon as he hides the money, his father enters his room, which leaves him startled and scared. To avoid any suspicion, Idu hands his father the earnings for the day and almost escapes from getting caught. Then, when his friend Guinea takes him inside the ruins of an old mansion, Idu discovers a part of the mansion that's covered in shallow water. Notice how the camera points towards a shoe that's floating in water. Don't forget it because we will notice the same shoe once again. But before that, we see how Idu finds out about his father's secret love affair with one of the customers who previously came to the shop asking for delivery of the meat. This revelation makes him feel pity for his mother who has to take care of everything on her own. She is innocent and unaware about her husband's dark secret. He feels that it is time to rescue the family from the shackles of the butcher. In the next scene, when Guinea takes his friend to meet a guy who can help him fleeing away from the city, we realize that he is the same bald guy who started following Khuddus in a previous scene. A great use of show don't tell in a non-linear style. We saw how Khuddus, while trying to run away from the man, meets a dead end in the shape of a wall. But what does this mean? After this, when Khuddus is thrown away from a restaurant for getting drunk, he forgets his way back home. This is the second time after the mosque when Khuddus meets Idu while he's chatting with Ginni about leaving the city on the road. Khuddus calls out for help, but once again he cannot get hold of Idu. Ultimately, he is able to reach home and decides to take a look again inside that same room whose walls seem to be attached with Idu's house. But as soon as he turns on the light, there is water on the floor along with the same shoe that we saw previously the good use of a motif in the form of show don't tell. In the next scene, Idu revisits the days of his birth by looking at pictures shared by his mother. He also contemplates on the possible reason behind his father's affair. While he is lost in his thoughts, his mother gives him a coin saying that you never know what works in your favour. On the other hand, Khuddus was caught sleeping on the street. So the neighbours decide to call the police and get him arrested for quote-unquote causing nuisance in the colony. Though Ganesh bails him out, he also gets angry on him and says, Tu yaha se kabhi nahi nikal paayega. But why does Ganesh keep saying this to Khuddus? Because just like him, Ginni also tried to help Idu to get out of the city. I strongly feel that Ginni is the younger version of Ganesh, especially because of how both the characters are introduced with the same white shirt. And I think that due to the angelic association of this color, we can say that Ganesh aka Ginni was indeed like a guarding angel for Khuddus aka Idu. So what does this statement mean? Why is it getting repeated in the film? After his mother gave birth to a stillborn, Idu asked her to leave the city along with Shokat, the second-born child and Idu's younger brother. But she ignored his request and returned back to finishing the daily chores despite being weak after last night's attempt. 
Idu is not able to control his anger and starts lashing out on his father for not being available for the family. His father threatens to kill him and Khudus calls the police after hearing the noise from the other side of the wall. And you know why the police cannot find anything. Idu escapes the house and meets Ginny at the same ruined mansion. He requests Ginny to help him buy a train ticket from the money that he stole and kept in his room. Idu did get out of the colony, crossed the road and reached the railway station. But he could not catch the train as his father caught him at the station. He lost the one chance of escaping his father's prison and more importantly, his current life. But this is still not the reason why we see that dead end in the shape of a wall because he could have asked for someone else's help. The butcher cannot let the chicken get out of its cage. Saira gets worried after she learns about Idu's plan to escape from her husband. The butcher once again reminds Idu of the control that he has on the house. And then he utters one sentence which acts like a curse for Idu. Ab tu yaha se kabhi bhi nahi nikal paega. This is probably the biggest reason why Idu could never escape from the city. This one sentence resulted in his lifetime imprisonment. Maybe it was the fear of getting caught and killed by his father. Maybe it was the fear of never being able to do anything in his life by himself. He reminds Shokat of how he helped his brother and mother to escape from the cage of the butcher by slitting his throat. Maybe the guilt of killing his father did not make him leave the place. Maybe it was the promise of freedom that he had to fulfill for his mother who had narrated the story of her life before marriage and how she adjusted to the new closed environment. He might have thought to release her mother from the shackles and leave himself behind to pay the price for the crime. But the way Khuddus helps Idu to escape reminds us of that question that gets asked in interviews and is posted on social media. What advice would you give to your younger self? In the case of this story, that advice would be just one word. Run. Get away from this mess. Leave this twisted world behind and escape into a journey of exploring the real meaning of life. Fly high and look beyond those boundaries that have limited your imagination till now. Discover yourself by going past those internal fears and traumas that are nothing but the shackles of responsibilities that were forced to become yours even when they should not have. Don't let the curiosity of your inner child suffocate and eventually die in the hands of your destiny. You never have to live and die a lonely life. Or ant mein apne aap se yahi kaho ki tum yahan se zarur bahar nikal sakte ho. The narrative of Gali Gulia represents the allegory of escaping the dreadful, twisted maze of life. A life that is forced upon you like a promise which needs to be fulfilled even at the cost of your own existence and sanity. A life that was not chosen by you but still cannot be left behind due to our own internal fears. A life that makes us forget about our individual choices and robs us of our freedom to prosper. And this is how the film explains such incidents and emotional traumas with the help of its two characters, Idu and Khuddus.